So in this video, I want to analyze a typical day of food for an average person. So for breakfast, they had two eggs, toast, avocado, half avocado. For lunch, they went out to uh, lunch and they had a salad, fish, and bread that they bring on the table, right? Dinner, chicken soup. This was at home. This was canned, okay? And then for snacks, they had a piece of chocolate and corn chips because they create a little salt, salt and chocolate. So right there, that tells me they're adrenal. So the first thing I'm going to look at is I'm going to look at why this person cannot lose weight from the fat burning hormones. So we know right here fat burning um, occurs with triggering with, with consuming protein. So that was really good. Avocado is a fat, but it's very neutral. It will it will actually help you burn fat because it's a healthy type of fat. Plus it's very satisfying. But the toast is going to block that fat burning for that meal. Salad fish, okay that's good, but of course they add the bread in there. All it takes is a little bit of carbohydrate to throw off the fat burning. Chicken soup. Most of the chicken soup out there that you buy from the uh, grocery store has MSG hidden as um, modified food starch. That will stimulate insulin by 300 percent, blocking all chances of losing weight. So this might be a big problem. Chocolate, most chocolate has sugar in it again, but even if it doesn't, a little bit of caffeine is not good to consume at night because that can keep you up. But um, chocolate contains not necessarily caffeine, but a chemical that it mimics caffeine. So I don't want to get into exactly the details in that, but it can act like caffeine. And then of course, corn chips are a carbohydrate right through in here. That might be a problem because it's turning into sugar very easily. Now if we analyze it through the nutrients, um, this is good. Avocado has basically the highest amount of potassium you can consume. It's very nutrient dense. Eggs are almost a perfect nutrient food, so that's good. Uh, toast doesn't have a lot of nutrition. Uh, salad. I would like to know the quantity of salad that that person consumed. Was it a lot? Was it a little? It needs to be during the day uh, probably about seven to possibly ten cups of salad. So if this is a side salad, it wouldn't provide any nutrients at all. So we got so we got chicken soup. This is in a can. There's not a lot of nutrition in canned foods. So right off the bat, this person does not have enough nutrition to satisfy the requirements that we need. Cravings. This person I can see craves chocolate and salt late at night because their breakfast is not, it's, has, it's allowing carbohydrates right here. If you want to prevent cravings at night, it's important to have a big, big huge, solid breakfast that has eggs, protein, and fat. Not necessarily any carbohydrates. This is the secret to preventing cravings at night. Okay, so if you consume too many carbohydrates or even like go at the IHOP and consume all that stuff, you're going to crave at night big time. Okay, so we've got cravings. Estrogen, that would be like uh, soy. I don't see any soy in here. I don't necessarily know if a lot of these foods are organic or have hormones in them. They may, um, like if it's farm-fed fish or if the eggs were not, uh, you know, grass-fed, I, I doubt it. So that could consume some type of estrogenic type effects. Gluten could be in the toast, bread, and that will affect the digestion. So they may feel bloated through the day and giving a lot of uh, symptoms from gluten, which would be irritable digestive issues and even arthritic symptoms, possibly. Uh, GMO, that is genetically modified foods. If we scan the list, the big thing that jumps out is the corn chips. Right now, almost all corn, soy, and um, canola is all genetically modified. So that's a big, huge problem that a lot of people are consuming unknowingly. The corn is the top one. So if you're going to do corn chips, which I don't even recommend, make sure it's organic or GMO free. Okay, So they've got GMO, organic. I don't know if any of this is organic. The benefit is that it's a little bit healthier nutrition wise and it has less hormones and chemicals. And then for your body type, that's a whole other layer of thing that we can look at because some body types need more of this or more of that. So I just wanted to kind of quickly scan to give you some tips that when we look at a daily food plan we want to dissect from the viewpoint of, are you able to burn fat? Do you have enough nutrition? Are we preventing cravings? Is it aligned with your body type? Um, I'll be doing monthly seminars uh, for the people that come to my website, and I'm going to be analyzing 
your daily meal plan so we can really educate you on what to eat to maximize health and minimize the damage. Okay? So this is a little bit of an introduction. I'll see you in the next video. Hey, before you leave, I just wanted to give you a little quick history on some of the books that I wrote. This was one of the first books. It's called Dr. Berg Body Shapes. It was my attempt at um, writing about body types. Uh, what was very interesting about this book is I actually did all the images myself. Uh, don't ask me why. Um, they look actually not quite as professional as some of the uh, images that I have in the new book. But anyway, this is my first attempt right here called Dr. Berg's Body Shape Diets. Uh, and then I wrote a book um, more extensive called The Seven Principles of Fat Burning. I don't even have a copy anymore, actually, um, because it's outdated. Uh, the next book, uh, I put about a thousand hours into this one right here called The New Body Type Guide, Major Updates on the Body Types. Uh, I put a lot of energy into this. Uh, it has professional images, graphics, all sorts of things. Now, the problem with this book is it doesn't really describe what this is really about. Body types are only a small portion of what's in this book. And that's why I changed the name to The Healthy Keto Plan, okay? If you happen to have this book, you don't really need this book because there's some only very, very minor updates. But if you don't have this, you need to get this one right here. Um, this book goes into every single detail that you would ever want to know about. It goes into the seven principles of fat burning. It goes into hormones, uh, the body types, the basic keto plan. It goes into intermittent fasting. I talk about the 10 fat burning triggers and blockers and fat burning strategies with a lot of details in every single chapter. I go into body issues that interfere with losing weight. Um, there's very few people that just have a weight problem. They have a lot of body issues, whether it's sleeping problems, uh, stress problems, inflammation, menopause. I cover that extensively in this book. Then I talk about how to get rid of stress and I show you a technique. Uh, then I get into exercising. And then I have a lot of really good recipes in this book as well. So uh, this is a good reference guide. Um, on my website, if you get this book, you get this one free. It's called Healthy Keto Intermittent Fasting. This is the shortcut, a uh, quick guide to this book. And uh, the reason I created this book is to have you within 45 minutes learn how to do keto, okay, in intermittent fasting, exactly what you need to do. Then you can fill in the blanks with this book right here. So right now I'm doing a special. If you get this book, you get this one totally free, or you can go to Amazon and get these individually. So I just want to clarify the difference between this book and this updated one right here. If you don't have this, you need to get this right here. That way you can get the exact correct information to do it healthily.